This is a tutorial for those students in the music technology class who have no uh, musical experience. So the, the program that we'll be using is Finale Notepad. You'll see here that there are different versions. Uh, the Notepad version is free, I believe, for 30 days. It can be downloaded at the website you see at the bottom of the screen. Very easy to use. You start with a document wizard. You see here that you just type in your title as you begin and your name, your composer name. This is your project, so you'll put your name there. You can format it to different types of paper. We're going to be using a landscape format. And then click Next. You'll see all the different kinds of instruments that you can use different keyboards or voices, woodwinds, all kinds of woodwinds here, different brass instruments, different strings, different plucked strings and percussions. So a lot of different sounds that you can get as it when it plays back for you. So we're going to be using some brass. We'll add a trumpet. Just notice how I double click on it here and we'll add a tuba. Double click, go up to keyboards. We're going to double click on synthesizer. And then finally, down here in percussion, we're going to add mallets, add drum set, and add percussion. Let's say you wanted to edit this, like say I added an extra percussion by accident. You can just highlight it and hit remove. It goes away. Notice over here down in the bottom where it says score order. Uh, if you take that off, you can move them around, and those are the order that it'll be when you see your music. So moving on here. In the document setup wizard, you notice you can choose your time signature. If you don't know what music is at all, it doesn't really matter. Just do the one that says 4-4. And then you can also choose uh, key signature. You can leave that one as it is and change it to minor on the right there. And also change the number of measures to 8. And you'll be set up for our project. And then notice here it automatically creates a template for you. You'll see your title, your name, and the instruments that you selected for the project. Moving on here, uh, the next thing we're going to do is add some text. So you just go to the left here and choose the little, little A, and it's just like any graphics program. The little a I think is the same as if you were in like a word paint or something and you can just click on it, double click the space where you want to add your text and put that in there. So make some comments and you know make this project original for you. That's very easy. Before we move on I want to uh, show you or let's look at what's on our screen here. What are these different uh, menus and templates and palettes, I guess palettes that we have here. So if you look here, we have a selection tool, and this is all in the main tool palette. Uh, entry tools, a triplet tool, a sh different shape tool, text tool. We have a repeat tool. If you want to put lyrics in, you can do that. Articulation, expressions, you know, and you can move these anywhere on your screen that you'd like. Also, you have uh, your simple entry palette and all different kinds here again a different triplet ties uh, different types of notes you don't have to know how music works but if you can find the notes that are just circles that aren't filled in or if the notes that have stems or the notes that have the little flags dangling from them if you can copy that you'll be able to do this project and the same with the shapes below you can you know find the same shape that will need to be put into your project based on the handout that you have in class now notice also up top there's a simple rest palette that you'll need to use. Now that rest palette doesn't automatically come up so you, when you to open that window go up to windows and open that simple rest palette. Alright well next we are going to actually enter notes. So you pick the note that looks like the note on your sheet. If you don't know what music is at all you, you treat this like a graphics project like I said and you click in the same boxes which are called measures and you put the same kind of notes in the same places and you want to work from left to right on each measure. Now notice here I actually made a mistake I can 
click on the eraser tool just like in paint or any other program and get rid of it and do it again now as far as the different kind of notes go you know if it has a line on it try to use the one that has a line if it has a flag use the one that has a flag if it's open use the one that's open now notice here you can select things and mass copy so if you don't have to be if there's something that's repetitive like this tune that you're doing you could actually copy and paste so you're, you're not spending all day inserting all these little notes now notice in this next measure here that there's a little B by this note and it doesn't automatically click or come up so you just click on that little B it's called a flat sign and click on the note that it corresponds with and notice it just shows up now there's another way you could do it too I'll, I'll delete here and move backwards I can click the note and the B and if they're both selected at the same time here it's not on because this first note here won't have that B on it but I'll have to go back and click the B they're both selected so every note I enter here will have that flat in it and then when I take it off it goes back to normal so you can do that same thing over on the left with flat signs you can do that with sharp signs which are is the number sign or natural signs which is that funny little square thing over there now uh, a second ago I talked a little bit about mass editing how you could select groups of notes and paste them or drag them later in a measure so you don't have to retype you can also uh, mass move full measures so you just click on the measures it'll highlight the whole measure and drag it to another section like we just did if you notice the top of the synthesizer and the row that says mallets are exactly the same in those first two mallet in those first two measures. Now entering the percussion stuff like the drum set or the percussion line on the bottom can be a little trickier because every line and every space has several different sounds that are correspond to it, several different drum sounds or shaker sounds or cymbal sounds. So you notice here is when I click on that space, if I hold uh, my mouse down and drag up or down I can hear the different sounds and it'll also pop up on the screen the, the words of what the sound is and you can select exactly what you want and get that exact sound that you want now I did something else just a second ago for the first time that little squiggly line that's not a note that's a rest so if you see something that's not a note look in that rest palette and find the shape of the one that you're looking for and put it in the spot that it needs to go here's another thing that's pretty repetitive so I can just mass edit it everything was the same except for the very last note and then I will do the last note or the last two notes I guess in this measure sometimes you'll notice that there are notes that are stacked on top of each other those are called chords that's very easy to do in finale and you just make sure that you put the note right on top of it if you put it to the right or the left it'll make the next note like right there but if I go above it or right below it it'll make a chord you'll see this in your project in the synthesizer in the tuba and down in the percussion in the first measure you'll notice that there are a bunch of little dots and those are called repeat signs so you just click on that repeat sign tool and when you double click on it that measure you get the option to bring it uh, choose one on the left of the measure or on the right and so I'm gonna go to the end and double click on it and choose one on the right oops I made a mistake here Notice I put it in measure four rather than at the end of measure two. Each little box moving left to right is called a measure again. So I'm going to undo and go back to that first page. Double click again and select it in the second measure. Notice I could scroll from the left to the right page with those arrows on the bottom of the screen. The next thing we're going to do here is insert dynamics. The little MF and FF and MP, those are different volumes, how loud or soft you should play. So you just double click in the spot where you want to put it, select 
the letters that you want and click and it's there. You can move it around. Notice it attaches itself to certain notes, either up above or below or left or right. And try to get it close to the beginning of the measure and the first note in each measure in your project. Now you have a couple other ones, that the FF, which is fortissimo. The first one, MF, is mezzo forte. And then there are a few more on the other pages as well. Next, we're going to do some major mass edits. We've done copying individual measures, and we've copied uh, into, you know, groups of notes. But notice how uh, if you look at measures uh, four or three and four, how they're the same as five and six for the most part, except for a few things at the end. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste those measures and then just change the notes that are at the end. So look at the end of the measure here in the trumpet part, how on your part it, it doesn't go, the notes don't go down the lines at the end, they go up. So we're going to just click on it and drag it up. Click and drag it up. Now notice here there's a flat sign and we don't want that flat sign. So this is where that natural sign, that funny little square, comes into play and the you know you don't need to know why but the little natural sign makes the flat sign go away and you do this with a few other measures and you'll be set to go you'll notice in the very very last measure of the song that there on your sheet there's something that looks like a little bird's eye and we, we need to do that. So if you go to the, the tool that has the sideways V on it and click on that, then click on the very last note of the measure, you'll see a bunch of options popped up there. And if you just click on the individual notes and click on that bird's eye, it's called a fermata. It means you hold it out longer that you can add that to every measure. Very similar to that is the crescendo tool. Notice in the second to the last measure here, we haven't put any notes in there yet, but there's a long sideways V. That means gradually get louder. So if I click on this tool and double click and hold down and drag to the right, it makes this sideways V here. And you can show or you can adjust how wide you want it to look. It doesn't change the sound or anything, but it just makes it look prettier or more fitting for each part. Now as you're doing all of this stuff, you might want to play it back and listen to it. And that's what the playback controls are. You hit play. It plays. If that, see, you know, that was really fast. It's not as fast as I wanted. So the tempo controls here, I, I want to move down to 95. You can scroll down or just type it in. Press play. That's more like what I want. Notice, you know, this, some of these other options are weird. Wow, that's really fast. So I'm just going to leave it as it is. And you can just leave that as it is, too. Now, say you want to start from a specific spot in the song, like the second to the last measure. If I count here, one, two, three, four. Next page, five, six, seven. Yep, that's the seventh measure of the song. So if I just type in a seven there, hit play, it'll start there. And that's handy if you, wow, well, all right, lots of notes. That's handy if you want to just hear a part of the song so you don't always have to start at the beginning. So here's the whole song. 